Hi guys, this is Amna. You're watching Ahi. I'm with Umar Farooq. We're standing in the Republic store in Karachi. Umar, how does it feel? Very good. Very thank good. You, thank you for coming. Catching up after a long time. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. Umar has a lot to share. Tips on how to dress this winter, how to go to weddings for men, wardrobe essentials, best dressed celebrities. Yeah, we've already discussed that. We've discussed that as well. <laughs> and of course, Umar's personal trajectory, what happened uh, before COVID, post COVID, and where the store and the brand is going now. It's been good. It's been good, going good places. Stay tuned. <laughs> This is Ahi Icon and we're tapping into icons from the fashion industry. One of my favorite menswear designers, somebody that I've always admired on the runway. Catwalk collections in ki hoti thi. Aisi ki aap ghar jate the with a smile on your face. Why? Because he had a signature, he had personal style and it just rolled out so well and so seeming, you know, absolutely smooth. I have with me Umar Farooq from Republic. Umar, it's been a long time. It has it's been. It's been a COVID time. It has been. And you're in Karachi. Yes, I am. And it's so exciting. And your store is just, as I remember, things were in Lahore, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I've always admired your collections at Fashion Week. And the good thing about them was always that they were never depending on a gimmickry or a celebrity uh, to sell those collections. Um, although there was a celebrity, of <laughs> course, always in your collection. But they, they, it was not depending on a celebrity or a, or, or a you know... A, Close. I, I, I think every uh, brand needs a face and needs yeah. an identity as well. Yeah. I had always sort of sh like shied away from uh, being at the at the front, being the front face right. of the brand. Right. I believed that maybe I I don't have that ability to be the front liner or to be the front face. Mm. My abilities they lie more in the design. Mm. And how to grow the brand and yeah. having a certain vision for the brand. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of designers who have done it successfully. Uh, but I felt like that maybe I could not I could not do it. But you always had a face to the brand. Yes, but we did. The, we, the collections had a really strong identity yeah. of their own. So I feel again, I mean, to, to answer that, to clarify that question. Uh, I feel if your design philosophy is very clear. Hmm. And your understanding of where and how you see your brand is very clear. Mm. I think people will get that picture as well. At the end of the day, we're selling a product. Yeah. At the end of the day, we have to follow certain criteria and rules. Mm. Number one, the fabric has to be what you're what you're yeah. saying is what you're selling. Yeah. If you're not lying, you're not deceiving the client. Mm. It is going to show, and you will grow no matter what. Mm. Number two. How good is your design philosophy? Mm. Number three, how are you projecting your design philosophy through marketing and through mm. your advertisements? Right. So I think our photo shoots were always our plus points. Yeah. We always made sure that we choose the right photographers, the right models, mm. and the right way of actually putting our brand out. Mm. And I, I would like to say this on, on record because a lot of brands I feel like have failed to do so is to stay relevant. I feel like it's extremely impossible now to stay relevant over a decade as well. Things are moving so fast. It's better now. It's no. It's easier my, now my, or tougher my, now? No, my point is that if you if you look at certain brands 20 years ago, like they had a long span. Yeah. You know, certain brands, mm -hmm. well, I would never name any brand like that, but they had a long span. But now they don't, they don't sort of fall in that category anymore, like the highs that they had seen. Why? Because they couldn't evolve with time right. and they could not stay relevant with time as well. So I feel like brands who tend to stay relevant is a huge, uh, it's, it's a challenge. So is relevance, does it come from evolution of style and design? Or does it come from evolution of marketing your brand? Both. Things. We've always believed, Umar, that menswear is a t very tough market in Pakistan. If we women's wear, ki baat karte hain, toh, we always say there are two seasons. There's summer and then there's festive, wedding. Mm -hmm. Menswear mein aisa lagta hai ki ya to men are buying really traditional clothes mm -hmm. for the festivals, for Eid or for weddings. Or then they're buying abroad. When they're buying their suits or their shirts or their trousers, they're not shopping in Pakistan. 
So how challenging is it to maintain and grow a brand, a menswear brand in Pakistan? Initially, it was extremely difficult. It was very difficult. Why? I just met someone yesterday, a client out of nowhere, and I spoke to him. Uh, it reminded me of someone I met 13 years ago. Hmm. So when I opened up my store, it's a small story out there. So this 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 uh, guy came, and uh, I I know what he did for a living. He he runs a very prestigious hotel in Lahore, uh, and he was very well off. He could afford anything at that time as well, and even now. Hmm. So he looked at my cloth and he's like, "Ye kapda kahan se?" Hmm. Uh, and I'm like, "This is Zenia. Hmm. I'm the only one who's brought in Zenia fabrics from Italy in right. Pakistan." Uh, so he's like, "How much are you selling the suit for?" I'm like, "Seventy thousand. This is two thousand and nine, right? <laughs> or ten? I don't remember." Uh, and he's like, "Seventy thousand? I could buy two suits hmm. from Hugo Boss." Hmm. I had to sit and explain that yeah, Hugo Boss does not use the same yarn count. Yeah. This is a custom suit. This will be bespoken on you. Mm. So he's like, okay, make one for me. Okay. I'm like, sir, I like how you're like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Make one for me. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, sure. Mm. And then uh, I'm like, sir, advance. Mm. He's like, I'll pay you when I come. Huh. I said, okay, no problem. Uh, so I I made him suit. He came. He tried on. He's like, this is one of the best suits that I've worn so far. Mm. I'll send my guy hmm. to pay you. Okay. I never saw that payment. You never saw the no. payment. No, and he's not the first one who did that to me. Wow. There are like maybe I think more than five hundred people who have done that. But the point that I was making to my client yesterday yeah. was that I never gave up. I never gave up, hmm. and that's who I am, and that's the reason why Republic is one of the best brands. Right. Is because I never gave up, hmm. and I never will. So why how, do you how, think people behave like that? How can people not pay people? I have no idea, but I feel like maybe at that time, maybe he felt privileged that maybe I should. Well, that's half your population, right? Half is privileged, and the other is entitled. And no, but I never saw it that way. I'll tell you. Guy, whoever you are, please come and pay now. No, no, no. no <laughs> he's a pro, he's a he's a he's a very good client now. Okay. He's a proper, but see, that's how mm. I feel like I won hearts. Right. In our in our society, okay. where I didn't bombard people over these things, I let them choose on their own. That yes, they are getting value for money, and they mm. are getting the best suit, or the best anything. Okay, but do you agree still that they're shopping more for either festive wear? Or yeah, then they're not deviated from the. Yeah, you did. Story. It's okay, but that was a fun story. Yeah. <laughs> Are they still shopping for fest? Because I see a no, lot no, no. of a uh, lot of festive no, no, wear no, no. in your uh, store as well. Uh, in our society, Pakistan is still eighty percent predominant women's wear society. Yeah, right. right. Uh, but I think that was ten years ago. Mm -hmm. I feel like this new generation, even um, I would say. Someone in being in their thirties or in their mid twenties right mm. now have a very different mindset mm. from people or from the society that we had ages ago or mm. a decade ago. I think this generation now they have their own money to spend. Mm. I feel there are less privileged people now in the newer generation. Okay, that's what I. That's how I see it. I could be wrong. Uh, and I feel like there's there's the middle class in Pakistan. Mm. No matter what economically they are being crushed, mm. but they are trying to survive and they're trying to climb. Mm. And the stronger our middle class is going to be, the stronger the buying power will get for uh, any 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 human being, and especially for for a male, mm. because males are, like a norm set to work. Males would shop less. Yeah, it's not that. And and on a higher price. Uh, no, because if if, if if it's a male's job mm. or duty to run the house, mm. then obviously after spending X Y Z amount of money, he will have nothing to spend on himself. But I feel like <laughs> this. Yes, Ani, that's not why we say this. No, no, less. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm I'm telling you, like try to understand the point that I'm making. Okay, now this this the stigma is going away. Right. Uh, now people are becoming more independent. Mm. Now people are feeling that they. They don't need to do that, yeah. you know. Like they, they can actually experiment on themselves as well, and they can spend money on themselves as mm. well. So I feel now, it's the same with women's wear, and it's the same with men's wear. Mm. As soon as wedding wear, festive wear would come in, you would see people, men flocking in, 
coming in, buying their clothes for right. weddings as well. Um, you know, it could be like a luxury kurta mm. with a bit of embroidery. Something would someone would want something plainer. Shadia only mm. happens in winters in Pakistan Ji. mostly because of the weather. Ji. So people would wear like waistcoats on top of their shalwar kameez or get like a nice shawl or a chadar, mm. uh, maybe like a prince jacket, prince coat or a sharwani, like a plainer one. If it's if it's their sister's wedding or their mm. brother's wedding, so I feel like now this new generation is not. Like that, that stigma is going away, and we see a lot of color in menswear now in Pakistan. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, absolutely. Uh, I feel like color had always been in us part of our subcontinent. Absolutely. Like if you look at India, Bangladesh, yeah. Sri Lanka, like we're all part of this this subcontinent yes. region. Uh, there's a lot of color, mm. and they, they, I feel like there was a lot of color in Pakistan as well. Mm. It's just over the years we've sort of felt the compulsion. That men are only supposed to wear darker tones, and mm. women can experiment with colors. Mm. And I feel like this new generation does not want to follow those. So set this of rules new generation anymore. is a fun generation. It is because it is, it is. their dressing is a bit gender fluid. They're yeah. not that restricted. Yeah, they're a bit more adventurous, a yeah, bit more yeah. experimental. So, mm. what design changes do you see? What have you made? What kind of design changes have you made within I, the brand? Um, okay, so if I if I if I may start with our Eastern wear, yeah. Uh, which has, uh, you know, it's it's almost sixty percent of our revenue, right? Maybe more. Um, I feel people are now understanding uh, that men can also wear embroidered stuff, mm. and embroideries are not supposed to be uh, something that you know only women should mm. wear, or even there are certain types of embroideries that men can wear. Mm. So. Brands like Republic have actually understood that what men want in terms right. of embroideries. Okay. Okay. What's the max and what's the minimum? Is it a masculine and a feminine embroidery? Yes, there is. There is. There is. क्या फर्क है तेरा? I feel like के मर्दों का काम बारीक होना चाहिए. Okay. ज़्यादा मोटा patchwork heavy नहीं होना चाहिए. I feel like you should not uh, try to skim. On your embroidery, mm. I feel like if you're selling a product for 300k, mm. it doesn't matter if your profit margin is less on it. Okay, give that man that product mm. that would make him send 200 clients to your store mm. because that's where you will, you know, catch that. Okay, because otherwise, if you're just trying to make that that little extra on one piece, mm. one garment. तो भाई आप वहीं वहीं पे रहोगे यू विल नेवर ग्रो सो यू योर योर ट्रेजेक्ट्री शुड बी फॉर द नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स लकीली आई कम फ्रॉम अ जनरेशन एंड आई हैव दिस ओल्ड स्कूल मेंटेलिटी वेयर यू नो आई डोंट बिलीव के आर लाइक दैट 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 केड ऑन यूट्यूब मेक्स फिफ्टीन मिलियन डॉलर्स बाई ओपनिंग यू नो बॉक्सेज या अनबॉक्सिंग आई डोंट लुक एट दैट राइट I I don't look at any of that stuff. I'm like, yeah, good, good for him. You know, may God give you more. Mm. It's good. Uh, but I feel like, what, it, what is my trajectory? How, what, the line of work that I'm in? Mm. What, the, what is the requirement for it to become a 500 crore or maybe a thousand crore? Brand? Right. So how can I reach that? And it can. It can it absolutely. Can. It yeah. can. Yeah. Uh, and it will, inshallah, by the will of God. But Your trajectory should be clear. Hmm. Your mindset should be clear. You need to understand that your product has to have that originality hmm. and that truth behind. Right. What what justifies the high prices that fashion is charging these days? बहुत लोग कहते हैं कि जी इतना महंगा हो गया फैशन कि हम कैसे अफोर्ड करें? What people don't understand is of course the work that goes in behind making that one product, the overheads, and the fact that buying power शायद नहीं है पाकिस्तान में इतनी या है. Hey. Hey. Uh, so there are two, there are, there are two sides to to this this coin as well. Okay. Yes, our country economically is suffering. Hmm. Yes, our unfortunately our country is divided into a class system. Yeah. Which is jahan pe there is upper class and then there is middle and there is hmm. lower and like all of that. Yeah, the lower is being pushed to a point where I don't I I feel ke unko kuch nazar nahi aa raha. Hmm. At the same time, I feel like this middle class of Pakistan is also trying to crawl their way up. Mm. 
I admire our country's middle class, especially in the con- in a city like Karachi, yeah. where it exists, where mm. it actually exists. Mm. I know families in Karachi that live they they live in a household where the daughter, the son, the mother, and the father they all work. Mm. We hardly see that in Punjab, mm. but slowly we are now. Mm. We are getting there, and I'm so happy that this culture is developing because this this is something that will. allow humans and peop especially people from pakistan to understand the value of money and how it's being made and how and where to spend it to so when you buy something which is just cheap or cheap quality i'm sorry if i'm saying this in a very you know blunt way you know that you will be wearing this for a certain time period and then you will be throwing it away discarding it yeah but if you get something of quality you know that you're actually investing in it that is where sustainability also comes in mm. so i feel luxury brands will always have an edge because your if if the product is good people will come people will save up and they mm. will come mm. people do that for cars mm. i saved up and i bought a car when i was in my college i was in my university because i wanted to get that certain car mm. it's a mindset it's a like obviously i could have gotten Bilkul. a, 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 a yeah. as well no no the not that anything is wrong <laughs> with it but i did not want it to at that yeah. time yeah i wanted to live that dream mm. and that dream was, what was the car it was dream? a bmw okay yeah. <laughs> may i ask what yeah. okay but um, for me it meant my uh, everything you know and, and sorry to, so you cut you but just to recap a little bit for people who are not familiar with your work you returned you came back to pakistan yes, after I studying did. abroad mm-hmm. about 13 15 years ago no uh, no 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 i actually yes 15 years ago 15 years yes, ago yes absolutely 15 and then you started your brand which was yeah. republic yeah. and uh, republic kind of took off with the fashion week culture and that's the way we saw it actually uh, i'm not a republic never took off uh, in the first couple of years of our right. fakari i think i saw uh, i would say uh, the lowest of the lows in the first few years mm. we could not even break even mm. i had a vision of how i wanted my brand to be right but i never anticipated the market I had worked in fashion before for a few years mm. in Dubai but I never anticipated the Pakistani market. Mm. I remember when I was opening my my uh, my brand and I spoke to my father I'm I'm very close to my dad. Mm. And uh I spoke to him and I said that this is what I'm willing to do. And he's like I would I because I've seen him wear these suits and dress in a certain way most of my inspiration comes from how yeah. my father used to dress so he's like this is an amazing work line of work that you've chosen but it's 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 you will suffer and you will suffer a lot okay and are you willing to take that yeah. because you have everything hmm. why don't you come and yeah. take this but and your dad is into microfinance you yeah. mentioned yeah and he had a he has a he has a very mm. successful business mashallah but i was cut off mm. from it properly mm. my dad literally made sure that if you want to go down this road right. no matter how much i love you you have to be on your own you're on your own oh, i was yeah i was completely mm. and uh, now when i sit with my dad and i when i see him i i live with him uh every day when i meet him and i sit with him i see in his eyes that there is a certain sense of proudness you right. know like that my son has achieved something. made it yeah made it to that point and i enjoy that every time i see him mm. i feel that now i need to see more of it mm. you know like every day that's my inspiration mm. that every time i see my dad i would like to see that smile on his face yeah that pride that pride and it makes me so happy every day and that's my motivation. so if i may tap into the trajectory of your career and your life um a little bit of struggle then your brand took off pre covid ke time mein fashion weeks bhi ruk gaye and we saw less and less of fashion and campaigns went low as well and it was a tough time and then you kind of plummeted a little bit 
and you uh, disappeared during, uh, COVID in, the, in the last two years, in the last two, three years. We didn't see a lot of you. And in the last three you years went or? through some personal mm -hmm. uh, changes as well. Mm -hmm. And it seems now you've made like this grand, I wouldn't say comeback, I don't like the word. But it's no, like, I don't think uh, I don't no think we ever disappeared. Disappeared. Uh, but I feel like that we sort of uh, from 2018, 19, maybe 19, I would say. Hmm. Even though financially the business and everything else was at the right spot. Right. But maybe mentally or psychologically, hmm. I wasn't. Right. But I think every human being they have to sometimes go through a reset button. Hmm. And maybe 2020 was a reset button for me. Okay. So that reset button, maybe maybe it happens for a reason or maybe mm. it doesn't. But sometimes we, we try to find reasons mm. to actually grow within, within whatever happens. A lot of people, I feel that they can go down that dark road and never get out of it. But I'm very happy and lucky that I have a family, a support system, my dad, my father, that literally held me with his, um, you know, with his own like arms and like made me stand, made, made me where I am right now. And uh, I feel like that reset button changed a lot in me as well and how I see life now. And how I saw life before. And it made me a lot closer to God and question a lot of things that I was questioning at a certain point before. Mm. And now I feel that my clarity of life, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years from now, yeah. where my evolution of life will take But me. that's life, right? But that's life. Yeah. But as if for now, I feel very blessed and uh, very happy mm. and very content that I went through whatever phase that I did, but this reset button brought a lot of clarity in life. You used to make your own fabric as well. Uh, Are you still? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, fabric, hum log lete the. we used to import our fabric from yes. Italy. We still do for our suits. Right. Uh, but now we develop our fabrics for our Eastern world. Your jacquards and everything. Gigi. Gigi, Gigi, our jacquards okay. are all done in-house right uh, on uh, power looms, a smaller power I loom. I remember the, one of your collections had a very interesting... Uh, was it a three-dimensional gold um, jacquard oh, print yeah, or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that I was remember. a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that was yeah, one yeah. of my favorite collections. I remember, I remember talking to you yes. after the show and you were, yes, and yes, had yes. It elements of, uh, yes, yes. It of had a gold. Shimmer. It had yeah, a shimmer yeah, yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, and you yeah. said we made a shirt out of it. Yes, It yes, was yes. a beautiful and fabric. And you asked me something really interesting. You said, okay, Umar, do you think someone would wear this in Pakistan? And I remember that question and I remember the answer. I'm like, uh, I, mean, I wish people would, but it's my job to actually put it out there as well. Yeah. Because, you know, if we only think about it, it I would love to see the fabric if you still have it. But yeah, it was a beautiful I collection. To, I would have to find it. It was that. a beautiful yeah. collection and a gorgeous fabric. And I remember you mentioning at that time that you're manufacturing your jacquard. Yeah. Okay, so talking a bit about fashion, and I hope that a lot of young boys are watching as well for inspiration. What are the wardrobe must-haves that young men should have, Pakistani young men, in their wardrobe today. We're not talking about model sizes. The good thing is that fashion has become very inclusive mm -hmm. uh, to uh, different sized people. And um, what would you recommend? Um, Guys, wardrobe must-haves from Omar <laughs> Farooq. <laughs> essentials, I feel that, so there are certain things. Let's start from smaller essentials. Okay. I feel that everyone should have basic t-shirts in their wardrobe okay. and a good fitted t-shirts, whether it's oversized, mm. regular fit, but plain white, black, heather gray, charcoal gray, like basic t-shirts should be there. Okay. If you like to wear prints with your t-shirt, that's, that's up to you. But I feel like first get your basics and the essentials ready and done mm. Mm. out of the way mm. and then move on to things that you want to experiment with. Okay. So your white shirt, blue shirt, striped shirt, hmm. black shirts, like your basic button down should be there. Your basic trousers, black, brown, gray, all of all of these things should be hmm. there. In at the same time, in your eastern, your basic colors in your shalwar kameez, your with pajama, with shalwar, 
these things they make a huge difference because that's a lot of essentials no, no, it, is, it is it is because let's just say that even if you have like four colors in each okay. variation you will enjoy wearing those things throughout summer winter mm. however pakistan mein sirf fabric change hota hai mm. kyunki winter karachi mein to it's not that hard hey, yeah. uh, but still i would feel that uh, do change your wardrobe mm. like if winters are coming feel the need to go out and get something for winters yeah. because it will make you feel good about hmm. the, the the current season as well yeah. even if you get a sweater yeah. even if you get one sweater or a couple of things but feel the need to go out and invest in yourself hmm. because at the end of the day something in your wardrobe that looks good when you open the when you open your wardrobe and hmm. maybe that day isn't that great hmm. but when you see something that is there maybe a red sweater yeah. i don't know for someone a red sweater would do the job mm. uh just wear it it's a, it's a pick me up it's it's a pick me yeah. up and like just just wear it and feel mm. good that day mm. and even like looking in your wardrobe and having these details mm. would eventually make you feel better as well and you will enjoy it back to basics mm-hmm. four t-shirts we've got four button downs mm-hmm. we've got four trousers yeah suits oh yeah so in suits mm. uh yeah I don't know how I skip that. Uh <laughs> again I would feel mm. that uh people they f- they automatically go they, they uh, people come to us as well ki ji hame kuch bold window pane check mein de dein kuch plaid mein de dein mm. ya bold stripes maine pehni hai. It's good. Mm. Get that. But have your basics first. Mm. Get a every guy should have a plain black suit. Okay. A navy blue suit mm. and a charcoal gray suit. Mm. without these three colors your wardrobe is completely empty okay so that means that these three colors will not only complete your look but after these colors then you can you will be able to experiment with certain things hmm. so people come ki ji i need a bold dark bottle green suit with bold stripes on it hmm. maybe someone may might not look good in that hmm. and they'll wear it to a wedding or they wear it somewhere and maybe they will like yeah, what are you wearing <laughs> and they are like yaar i don't know man Haan, like you know mujhe acha lag raha mujhe acha lag raha so and they, then they, they they probably will not experiment again hmm. and then they they do they, they go into the shell ke yaar maybe i should not or maybe i don't i don't want to wear this anymore or i don't want to wear suits hmm. anymore so i feel like you don't jump into hmm. something too experimental all of a sudden okay like start from your Slow. basics ha and then build, build your wardrobe up right enjoy your the, the the classic tom ford style charcoal gray suit mm. that he wears and he he dons it uh get that out of the way mm. and then move move on to uh, the bold stripes or the checks okay or for this festive season 2022 what do you recommend for ethnic wear wedding wear what should the men be wearing this uh, winter at weddings okay <clears throat> so i feel like that everyone should experiment or have you know when the basics are out of the way get something which is in eastern a kurta with a bit of an embroidery just something in jacquard mm. would do the trick embroidery does not mean <laughs> over the top mm. colors or right. over the top like something that you would feel ke yaar ye to main hi pehen sakta mm. go for something which is very subtle which is like self on self let's say that you 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 you're okay with wearing a white colored kurta mm. or a black colored kurta so get something that has black on black white mm. on white blue on blue right that would be a lot easier for you to wear but do make that impression when you when you when you're going to a wedding make that effort to to get that when you're going to a mehndi mm. because at the end of the day your pictures are going to come out good <laughs> yeah. your instagram would look good, good yeah. and you would feel good about yourself mm. as well and there's nothing wrong with being a well dressed man of or being a well dressed person yeah, yeah i feel like that is something that will not only give you the confidence to to actually be more professional or mm. engage with other people and be more social as well mm. but it will uplift you and i feel like this new generation is is is, 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 is embracing getting, it yeah, embracing absolutely shalwars or trousers acha uh see pajamas i feel uh, have made a comeback Mm. in in pakistan mm. and i'm really digging this this new late 70s 80s vibe these days where they have like like khulle khulle pajamas yeah. 
you know like lucknavi uh, pajamas lucknavi yeah. pajamas we did a few pieces which mm. were very lucknavi style as mm. well and uh, i'm really into that easy relaxed fit these days right but i feel like pakistan may be slightly far behind right now because slim fit when i remember when slim yeah, fit they, came in oh god yeah. it was like tight kurta with these voluminous shalwars yeah. that was the look yeah. i can't yeah. even imagine yeah. anybody wearing that yeah. today yeah. <laughs> but i think now i i this this new world that we live in i think it's it's all about that personal individual vibe that that totally. person have totally people are like okay this is who i am yeah. and i'm embracing myself if i want to wear something like this i'll wear it hmm. so now you know like if you look back you could distinctively like have uh, 70s 60s hmm. and 50s completely set apart like if i show you a picture and i am like amna can you tell i'm like yeah, this looks like someone yeah. from 60s yeah or this looks like someone from the 70s cuz mm. you'll see the flare trousers yeah. you'll see those bigger collars you'll mm. see those prints and those the brown tones that everyone was doing mostly mm. in the 70s and you'll see that mm. yes there is a certain mm. uh uh look mm. that you know every every decade had mm. but ab to nahi pata chalta nahi nahi which is great i love it which is good yeah now today i could be from the 50s tomorrow i could be from the 60s absolutely so it's up to me yeah i'm loving this loving this, this this new generation yeah, yeah the new vibe so my fashion week so nahi ho rahe fashion shows bhi nahi ho rahe but i've been seeing a lot of your new campaigns and you shot some really really sharp campaigns recently there is a crossover between television entertainment industry and fashion in the last like 5 6 years it's really boomed mm-hmm. and you've dressed a lot of celebrities as well and um who would you say are the the most stylish people in your opinion from the industry from the stars uh, i mean they could be television film music uh, achha, sports uh, uh, it may sound uh, you know obnoxious but i i don't know a lot of Uh, television stars okay we see ahad raza meer on your feed we, we recently see, shot yes, with ahad and, and i feel that mm. ahad's personal style is also something that is very inspiring mm. he is slightly understated mm. but i feel like usne apna ek wo mark rakha hua hai mm. and he is someone who doesn't do a lot as well he keeps it very uh, limited and he's very personal as well in his in his in his private life and i feel like that resonates well with the brand uh so i feel like yeah ahad is is someone there well, who's and then you have bilal abbas khan as well yeah bilal bilal is also a very good a very good prospect he has a he has a very good personal style as well and i think he's a very good human being as well at the mm. same time mm. uh i know uh, a lot of people who are not part of the uh, the this media and right. all of that but like you should show us show biz yeah huh. uh, he's a he's an architect well, he's got a great sense he's of style he's got a great sense yeah. of style and even with our new brand by the way which my uh, wife and I we just started right it's called aomi uh, a o m i okay. it means river or water in japanese nice so that is a very contemporary uh, luxury brand uh that is going to launch very soon so yusuf is one of the the faces the faces nice. one of the faces nice uh i love mohsen's style mohsen is fantastic mohsen is fantastic mohsen is amazing uh, this entire group of boys you know yusuf mohsen um mustafa from rasta they all have a really sharp and very distinct sense of zen from rasta zen yeah yeah, yeah. you know even mustafa very good very good yeah yeah and uh, a little bit of flamboyant yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. gender fluid yeah, yeah 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 and um it's it's really admirable There's yeah, a lot of that in Lahore but you won't find that here in Karachi though. Acha nahi uh see that's recently what you know we were discussing at work as well that how I personally feel that you know like the Karachiites have a very dis- like it's a very distinct st- sense of style mm. but it's 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 slightly underrated mm. you know like there it's it's under the radar as well mm. because I feel like that's that that's what karachi demands right because i was born here mm. i lived here till 92 i right. moved out of the city in my early teens and uh, i remember how situation was and you know it, it karachi can be a dangerous city to live in mm. so unfortunately people feel the need to stay under the radar with karachi mm. and they don't 
do certain things in a certain way aur wo phir ek norm ek style ban gaya karachi ka ke har cheez should be under the radar hmm. whereas lahore i feel now this new generation i was at dinner the other day with, with my wife and my friends and i was surprised to see that this this i saw a bunch of kids from the age group of maybe early 20s or something and i literally felt like that maybe i'm not in lahore i'm somewhere in paris in a in a in a cafe in paris okay. and i'm like this is this is good yeah this is good because this is what i used to see when i was i used to travel a lot mm. and uh, like a lot of my inspiration came from traveling i learned so much from traveling the streets would teach you so much yeah. no matter where you go you know and uh, well as dan relan said the eye has to travel yeah for exactly. fashion you have to travel you have to you have to get and you have yeah. to get accustomed to different cultures absolutely and, so i feel like lahore is experimenting more hmm. uh but maybe i could be wrong no maybe. karachi has its own vibe yeah, always always, own always. Vibe. but it's yeah. great to have you here oh uh, thank you and it's uh, great to see you doing so well thank you thank and you. Uh, i hope that we see the new brand soon Inshallah. it sounds really interesting it because is, it is. your you said japanese and it took me back to your oh, japanese that, that collection, collection. Yeah, yeah. yeah it took me back to the japanese no it's just the name that it's comes the name from, right yeah. but i, love, I mean, we love that name but we love japanese and korean fashion i think it's oh, so fashion a, forward I, absolutely. For. Yeah, absolutely absolutely i would love to go to seoul yeah and tokyo i've never been there uh, so it's one of my uh, like like good bucket list exactly yeah so it it excites me as well you know that entire belt of fashion oh yeah absolutely so looking forward to thank you exciting so much. things thank from you your so brand much. thank you so and much. Uh, thank you for your time thank you so much for having me